Want to make your own podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easy, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money. All in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. Here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I feel like I have an outlet for the creativity and ideas I want to share with the world. I recommend you give it a try. We all have a voice, so share it with the world. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today. Imagine a large battery pack, a power source, and that power source can distribute power out through lines. Gettysburg, we have the Civil War. Imagine all of that hardship, the deprivation, then the death that took place in that region. That's like a huge energy source that I think can now power up that area and surrounding areas. There's a lot of hauntings. We're in the top seven weird on all the list, right? Re- reoccurring ghost encounters. We have all this stuff going on. The blood that's on the land, that iniquity, is that charging up the region. One place of many different things happening in strange PA that are powering up strange things happening. Welcome to the Days of Noah podcast, where we talk all things biblical, supernatural, and strange. And what better way to talk strange things than bringing on Rod Smith from the Millennial Mustard Seed podcast. He and I talk strange PA today, strange Pennsylvania. What's strange about it? Well, the supernatural, weird sightings, weird occurrences... Just about every place across the world has some strange things that have happened at some point in time or another. But Pennsylvania is up there in terms of just the number of sightings, paranormal activities, and we dive into some of those things and some of the possible explanations for why it is the way it is. Is there defilement on the land caused by... As Dr. Laura Singer talks about these four key areas of defilement that can leave a mark on the land and give occult, evil powers the ability to run amok. So we dive deep into that and more surrounding the strange things in Pennsylvania. And hopefully we'll be doing more episodes along these lines, different states in the U.S., and some of the weird creatures and paranormal activity that are going on and speculate and hypothesize as to why those things are occurring and what we can do spiritually and with God's help to shut it down in many cases. Guys, so make sure to like, share, and subscribe to both the Days of Noah podcast and Rod Smith's The Millennial Mustard Seed podcast. Click that five-star rating on your favorite podcast platform to help spread the show to others and get it seen. And if you have any questions or comments for the show, please feel free to email Luke or myself at the Days of Noah Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. And with that, let's dive into our discussion with Rod Smith on Strange P.A. What is going on, everybody? We are back for another episode, and I'm joined by Pete from the Days of Noah. Pete, what is going on, my dude? Hey, Rod. 
Good to be here, man. This was one you had an idea to do a few months ago. Strange PA, strange Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, it actually, some of the best stuff just comes about as you're discussing and in conversation. You guys were interviewing me on your show, and you both had mentioned that your wives were from PA. And I'm like, hmm, anybody that's from PA? Because it's like, the podcasting world is a big world, but it's also a small world, Pete, where it's like, I don't know everybody. I, I normally keep to myself. I don't know where people are from, but I'm finding out more and more like, oh, okay. So if you got some roots here, it means you know some weird stuff that's going on here. And that's what this episode is all about. Strange PA, strange Pennsylvania, supernatural Southeastern PA is my standpoint on this one. Mm-hmm. And Pete, you're the perfect person to be starting this, this mini series. And we'll see if it develops into something else over time, but yeah, every area has a little something weird going on, but Pennsylvania is really weird and there's a lot going on. That's yeah, why we're and, here. And I looked up a few things, uh, recently on supernatural and hauntings and things like that in Pennsylvania. And one of the websites I found and I'm trying to pull it up here right now, but it listed um, it listed Pennsylvania as number seven in the country for states with the most paranormal reported sightings or experiences. So that's up there. And we we hinted at it at a previous episode you and I did, um, where we talked about you know maybe the defilements on the physical land having to do with the civil war gettysburg's a huge one you know this goes back to see we're just trying to connect the dots here really right between stuff we've learned yeah stuff we've learned from from other guests dr laura sanger in particular yeah and and others and then putting those pieces together to say hmm what if so she's talked about defilement on the land and i'm kind of getting ahead of myself here but Defilement on the land, opening doors for uh, demonic entities. And when I say demonic, I don't necessarily mean demons specifically, but I'm using that as a general term for anything evil spirit related. Um, So, yeah, maybe Gettysburg is is part of that. So, Well, let me get super weird really early in the episode real quick with just some thoughts that I have about that. And... For the audience's sake, and for myself and Pete, let's just do kind of like a imagine with me, okay? You guys use your imagination out there if you have one <laughs> for, for all the robotics out there. Uh, sorry, this ain't going to work for you. But imagine a large battery pack, a power source, right? And that power source can distribute power out through lines, Okay, so let's look at Gettysburg now and just take in the ideas of the spiritual mapping through the Nephilim agenda that Dr. Laura has mapped out for us quite well in her book, actually superlative in her book and through her research and interviews even here on the, on the Millennial Mustard Seed podcast. She talks about what, and I'm going to recount what you just mentioned a second ago, Pete, the iniquity on the land through blood spill, through all these different things. Okay, Gettysburg, we have the Civil War. Imagine all of that, all the hardship, the deprivation, then the death that took place in that region. Right. That's like a huge energy source that I think can now power up that area and surrounding areas. So if we imagine that battlefield and that, because outside of time, God's outside of time, right? So these things are, are all happening simultaneously for him, if we'd like to think of it that way. And for us, we're in this little time slot, but there's still a huge source of power, a huge, crazy, you know, thing that took place, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. There's a lot of hauntings. We're in the top seven weird uh, on all the lists, right? Re- reoccurring ghost encounters. We have all this stuff going on. And it's like, is that iniquity on the blood that, uh, the blood that's on the land, that iniquity, that yeah. death? Is that charging up the region? And that's right. only one place of many different things happening right. in strange PA that are powering up strange things happening. Okay, this was an article I found on penlive.com. Pennsylvania among top 10 states with the most supernatural activity, according to a study. 
Guess what number one is? California? Yeah. Mm. And that does not surprise me when you look at the Whoa. cesspool of what Hollywood is. Dude, let me drop this real quick. Isn't California the third largest economy in the world? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it, if it was its own country, it would be, I don't know about third. Maybe it is, but it would well, be up there. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the, th- you guys fact check me if you think I'm wrong, mm-hmm. but look it up. California is the third largest economy in the world. Right. So it seems like a lot of energy, a lot of things taking place and not to undermine what you said about Hollywood. That's actually supersedes, but, but I think what it does is now we're starting to go, Ooh, so if number one is here in America in the melting pot where, hold on a second. Let me get weird again. You guys, I'm just puzzle piecing stuff together as I'm thinking out loud. You have the melting pot of the world here in America, which means we have breakdowns of different cultures from all around the world. You go to India, it's 99% Indian people there. You might find some people from like England or some Europeans or Africans or Asians, but you're yeah. here in America. That's not, that's not the name of this game. We're the melting pot. So wouldn't it be interesting if we had all of these different forms of witchcraft and darkness and entertainment and Hollywood, and then the death, the destruction, the rape, the murder, the pillaging, mm. all the silent pandemics that happen that aren't even talked about happening in the third largest economy doesn't surprise me it's number one pete you well and and i don't know about yeah how i don't know how the u.s rates as far as other countries you know this is california's number one in terms of the u.s states but along the track that you were just talking about what if the melting pot or or salad or whatever you, you want to you know take all the uh, ethnicities and, and the different uh, demographics that America is we really do have an influence of all nations here so you could be you know some tribal voodoo witch doctor guy and guess what somewhere in America that influence is alive and well so yeah uh, and that reminds me of Enoch, our friend, talking about Babylon being the USA, um, which Gary Wayne had a different thought on that. However, uh, there's a pastor on Twitter that I came across, Gabe, I forget his last name. We can put it in the notes. Um, He's got a sermon or two on this topic as the USA is Babylon. And it makes sense because one of the clues in Revelation, it talks about um, all of the different diversity of Babylon, and America has that. And his um, his friend or co-pastor or whatever has like a 22-hour s- a set of talks on why they think America is. So that's a little bit of a tangent there, but it goes with what you're saying. Um, I know you're busting to say a couple things, and then I'm going to give a couple thoughts on your energy uh, energy convergence thing that you were talking about and defilement of the land. Ley lines. Ley lines. Pretty simple ley lines. I mean, not that anybody has what I would consider to be a library of information that is completely up to par and respectable because it's, a lot of it's a mystery for us. We have to rely on anecdotal stuff. We have to rely on people that are seers in the spirit, have discernment, people that are spiritually mapping and shutting these things down. So it's not like there's a document where we can go or a book in the Bible that's going to break this down for us. We have to use discernment. We have to look at things for what they are. So I would just say ley lines, you guys. Yeah. And yeah, so... I think that kind of covers the California thing. Well, not covers it, but I, but I think it kind of puts it into a, a let's continue these thoughts. Let's see what we do with this information kind of perspective where it's like, well, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. You know, if we look at it as being this top economy, wherever it falls, regardless, and the diversity of things going on there and it being one of the top rated number one weird strange ghost sightings, UFO sightings, the plethora of different things that can go wrong. But mm-hmm. Pete, really what I wanted to to say, let's bring it back to the strange PA here and let's let's look at a couple key words. Okay? It's a keystone state. We have mm-hmm. the American founding history here. We have history books that are written from this region in southeastern PA specifically that go out and inculcate the world around us, right? There, people are being educated on figures that came out of this region, wars and battles that took place in this region. There's an American history that is portrayed from this region where the rest of the world takes wreck into it. And it's like, well, 
Not that I believe all that's true, but a lot of effort and energy and manipulation and harnessing of ideas and culture have been birthed out of this region. They call it a keystone state. So that means it what has to be pretty strange. Let's I don't look know. that Let's up. Dive what's into a, that. Let's dive what's into a that. keystone? I want to. Yeah, I want to know what this is. I mean, it sounds like the key master gatekeeper of Ghostbusters, doesn't it? A little bit. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. What I was going to connect to what you said earlier about kind of like this uh, magnetic or electrical kind of pull of of spiritual power due to you know defilement such as bloodshed. That reminds me a lot of, I think it was Ghostbusters 2, where it was all of the negative attitude, negative energy in New York City that was giving power to this toxic, evil sludge, if you guys remember that movie. It's not as memorable as the first one, not as good, but here's what's, I think, interesting about that. That connects to what Rod says, at least as we're speculating about how this might operate. It also connects to what Dr. Laura Sanger has talked about in defilement of the land. And this is, you know, these are biblical principles. I can't give you the scripture exactly, but it has to do with, you know, wherever your feet is trod or um, just many times in the Old Testament where the words, you know, such and such defiles the land. Now, that's a strange way to put it if it's merely a moral consequence. What does the land got to do with it? But these are these are clues to spiritual laws that God is giving us. And Satan does not play fair, but he plays legal. And if he has an in, <laughs> he's going to take it. So the four areas of defilement that Dr. Laura identifies is idolatry, sexual perversion, broken covenant, and bloodshed. And we talked a bit about Gettysburg just touched on it briefly, the amount of bloodshed going on there. So just to give my opinion on that, the above kind of defilements give legal access to demonic spirits. And those spirits then have influence on that land that they otherwise may not have. So when someone is murdered, for example, we often hear of their ghost haunting that area. Actually, Rod, just this morning, as I was looking up some of this information about Pennsylvania, there is a Kindle book you can get. It's on sale for $1.99. And it talks about what? It talks about the supernatural lore of Pennsylvania. It's called, uh, let me just click the link right here. I already bought it, but Supernatural Lore of Pennsylvania, Ghosts, Monsters, and Miracles. And just in skimming the first couple pages, it's the same old familiar story. So and so was murdered, and now her ghost apparently haunts the area. Well, I think more likely, though, the act of bloodshed opens that doorway for an evil entity to have free reign and is likely impersonating that deceased so as to obscure its true nature and identity. Now, one of our recent guests on the Days of Noah, we had the incomparable Bill Schneblin on. And guys, if you have not looked into Bill Schneblin's story, you're missing out on some fascinating things. His first 40 years of life, he was a master Freemason, high-level Mason. He was a Druid, a witch, a Satanist, you name it. He actually spent a year as a vampire, okay, literally living off of blood and communion wafers. That's the only thing he ate for a year, according to his testimony. Just imagine the level of evil power that can keep someone alive with that, right? Okay, but I'm not trying to just sensationalize Bill, but Bill has a lot of knowledge, and he's been a Christian now for 30-some years. He's in his 70s. And he said that occult rituals, in his experience, and he gives an example in his testimony, where he was doing some occult rituals, in I think it was a I think it was a school that he was going to, like a university. For two years after that occult ritual, that place was haunted. And it didn't get shut down until he dealt with it spiritually. So this may likely fall under that category of idolatry. If you are playing with things you should not be playing with, that is an idolatry 
uh, category of defilement, and now you've opened a doorway. The good news is that we as believers in Christ, we have authority to close those gateways and portals and revoke that access on other people's behalf that the spirit world has had. And there are some incredible stories out there. Listen to, I think it's Blurry Creatures episode like 177 or something with two SRA victims. And they're talking about this incredibly powerful demonic being. I mean, scary guy flying around the room. And they're like singing a little Bible song. I can't remember exactly. Go listen to the episode. And this guy's pounding the ground going, you messed up my ritual. Another story. uh, I just had uh, Jesse Zaboter on our show. The episode is going to release in a few weeks. She was saying dealing with what she was dealing with as a a four-and-a-half-year-old put in a satanic pentagram on the ground in a ritual. They were bringing up this ancient spirit, Ashtoreth, high-level demonic spirit, and the only thing her little four-year-old mind thought to do is sing the B-I-B-L-E song. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me, right? My wife knows this song. She grew up Baptist. I didn't, I never heard of this song. I grew up Lutheran. Okay, (laughs) that's a sidebar. That entity went back into the ground singing that song. So just think of the power of God over these scary things. I just want to make that point. And Rod, you can take it from there. Wow, that's awesome, man. Okay, so my wheel's definitely turning. I'm going to try to... (laughs) <laughs> try to hit on the important stuff and leave behind the whateverness but i think one of the things that we'll find with pennsylvania is it is smack dead in the middle of probably the largest section of population in the country as well right if we actually look at the total population in america you're going to see from like I don't know, maybe like Connecticut, a little bit above New York. Okay. All the way down to below Washington, DC. I don't know. What does that account for? Maybe 60%, at least 50%. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, (laughs) a large number. Okay. So there's a lot of people here generating energy, if you will. Right. Oh, there's two new agey. Hold on a second. Like we're made of energy. Like we know this stuff. Like the, the whole point that I would like to get at is We're alive, we're breathing, this is real time. We're interfacing with, I believe, different timelines, if you will, through the bloodshed on the land. Because the land does not forget. The land has to be redeemed. If I remember correctly, you guys, doesn't the Bible say preach the gospel to all creation? You ever wonder why it says all creation? Hmm. Yeah, we're supposed to go make disciples. We're, we are working on that. We're being discipled ourselves as we're preparing to disciple others. But what is it? What is this weird underlaying or overlaying that's happening over the land, regional? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers, dominions, archons, regional entities. What does that really look like? I mean, I, I want to get in front of pastors and say, what? Break that down for me. Don't just share that verse with me and keep cruising along. If this Bible's real, which I believe it is, I believe it's all real, <laughs> deeper and stranger than we would like to give the time of day for you guys. But yes, if it is what it says it is, why are we not being equipped and diving into the reality? Why are we not understanding the structure? Why is there no compartmentalization of how these things work and every detail thereof? So as we're looking at strange PA, strange anywhere, really plug in wherever you're from, something strange is going on there. But here in Pennsylvania, with the history, with the amount of people in the region, with the amount of dark timelines that have been placed because of war, because of you name it, look through your history books. The enemy is clearly like Pete, you just commented watering down the Bible. So we can't be effective. I just got, I had an interview this morning. Today's 10, nine with Dr. Robert Rodich. And uh, hopefully this airs or had aired, or it's very close within the timeline of when I air this here on my show. 
But you guys, that's what he's diving into. We're talking about these kind of topics because this is the reality. There's a fro, a false reality overlay, where we're all being affected by satanic ritual abuse level one. Code red level one. Now, it goes much deeper than that with certain individuals. Because of bloodline stuff, because of personal sins, because of even region. We can be subjected to specialized attacks because of region. But level one, hear me out, you guys. That is when the frequencies that are going out from our technology, the billboards, the flashing lights, what's subconsciously being, um, let's just say, attached into our minds, the culture at large, right? The vibes of the modern day, whatever you want to call it, that what we are subject to, that's phase one. The music that's playing when you're going shopping. If all of this kingdom of darkness is assembled against the one name that is above every name, if it all is assembled and strategically positioned against the name of Jesus Christ, all of these little camps and and sources of information and things that we are building an inventory to try to make sense of as Bereans in this modern day, as followers of the way in this modern day, it would all be strategically set up to attack us. From like a right. hundred different angles. Yes. So I'm going big picture right now, you guys. And I know some of you are right there with me. Some of you may be going, what is he, what is Rod trying to do? It sounds like he's jumping around because microcosm, macrocosm, you guys, we have a micro story. We have individual anecdotal testimonial stories of what, Hey, the ghost that's in your house, right. Or what you experienced while at the lake house a couple years ago with your friends, when you seen an entity hovering above the water, I don't know, but. It's not by accident, you guys. We got to start somewhere. And Pete, you're 100% right. I'm going to pass this back to you because the enemy is systematically desensitizing us to be ineffective as to our position in the ecclesia if we are of Jesus Christ. If we believe and we confess, we believe in our hearts, Jesus is the Lord of Lords. He is the only name given under heaven. We have been baptized in his name, and now we are being positioned by the power of God. In this generation, we are more important. I believe the Bible talks more about this generation than any other generation in time, Pete. Somebody out there is agreeing with me right now. Yeah. And the enemy does not want us to be effective. If we are indeed in that fig tree generation, that's the big question. And we may, may very well be, or our children. But yeah, when you were talking, just uh, thinking about, you know, the tens of thousands of different angles that evil can use to gain influence. You know, you mentioned the song that we listen to in a store or, you know, there, there's any number of things where based on our own free will and what we invite willingly or unknowingly, because it can happen through unwittingly right just dr laura has a story where a spirit of fear came into her she didn't want it it happened because she was terrorized in a crime-ridden city as a youngster um all these different influences you guys ever seen you can look this up um the blackest black they can ever make it's really cool it's like i don't know a special paint or material or something and you slather it on whatever bowling ball okay. whatever you want to slather it on okay Interesting. and you shine you shine a 10,000 lumen light on this thing and it barely reflects any light it's crazy how much it absorbs but it doesn't absorb 100% of it so just like cold is not a thing it's an absence of something else heat just like darkness is not its own thing necessarily, it is an absence of light. Darkness can never triumph over light. Light will always push it out. It, it has no choice but to flee. I was just saying to my church group that we meet in our home every week, and I was just saying one of the things I think is most amazing about God in his wisdom and creation is how, as I put it, how analogous God is to his creation, to nature. Analogous meaning there are myriad analogies you can make 
about how nature works, how a seed works in the ground, right? It has to die and then it brings forth a, 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 and an increase. A yield is, is created. Like farming, just so many analogies to the world. That's how God works. And here you have light and dark. And it's not an accident that evil is depicted as dark and God is depicted as light. Not that Lucifer isn't an, an angel of light, right, in disguise, but there's a reason for that. So that blackest black that, that humans can create, it's pretty dark, but you can get a powerful enough light that will still reflect a little bit on that. And I think it's, it's important to realize that one source of light, God through Jesus Christ, trumps all of those tens of thousands of angles that the enemy has a foothold in. And the only way that he has those footholds is when we don't walk in that authority. We don't understand what we're letting in. We don't let God in. We decide, nope, I'm good. You know, like that poem, if you've ever heard that poem, I'll take three pounds of God, please. Not enough to, you know, mess up my Saturday night before I go to church on Sunday, but just enough to make me feel good about myself. Look up that poem sometime, Three Pounds of God. But maybe, Rod, I don't know, comment on that. And then I would love to hear some stories, like some anecdotes about some strange PA. I can read a couple, but you live there, so. Dude, super, super awesome. Yeah, I, just to comment on what you're talking about. <sighs> There's people out there that are going to understand completely the high calling, the time now is to believe is greater than when we first believed. The signs are all around us, you guys. So I, I think that that's just going to settle with the right people as a to initiate, to move forward in your relationship, your secret place, your prayer with God, and to start praying bigger than you ever have before. Now, I want to ask the audience a question. You guys can think about this pause this for a second and think on it before you hit play but what is the difference between having a haunted spine tingling encounter versus feeling peace or joy on a calm beautiful day what is that what does that feel like for you Right. Because this, all right, hopefully you guys have paused it and just pondered that for a quick second, because when you're feeling peace, in my opinion, from where I sit, peace flows up and out of me when I'm in relationship with God. It's something that starts in and comes out. Or if I walk into a house that's covered in prayer and it's a godly house, I feel the peace on that outside coming and comforting. That's what's on the inside. Now let's talk about this spine tingling haunted experiences that take place. There's plenty of them to mention here in PA. I'll rattle a couple off, but when your spine tingles, that's an outward projection of frequency or vibration or atmospherical shift, if you will, that is penetrating from the outward in. The only people that are of darkness that have no light have darkness flowing out because the word says rivers of living water will flow out of those who are in Christ, right? So if we have a low vibration, a low frequency of shame and fear is the lowest frequency and vibration that we can admit from an internal place, right? What are we aligning ourselves with? So that... Uh, spine tingling experience that come on we all have felt it some of us maybe it's been when we were teenagers last or maybe as a grown adult i've talked with grown men and women who are like yeah i've went into places i'm spiritually sensitive i have the gift of discernment and i feel this when i walk in or i seen a little kid in the corner and something terrible happened to that little kid and that energy is trapped there this is not new age this is your reality if you guys will stop having these conversations around the fire most of you saying you're christians out there you have a beer or two You'll talk about this with your boys over the campfire when you're going camping over the summer. But then around the dinner table, your kid has a weird experience, sleep paralysis or a dark dream. And you want to act like, oh, no, that ain't real. What college are you going to in the spring? You, we got to be talking about this stuff to get ourselves aware of the fact that this is really going on. Don't be victim to the SRA level one, the fro, the false reality overlay, uh, overlay, as Dan Duvall would say. So we need to talk about this. So the frequencies that come from the outside that project on us, that's how darkness can work. Oppression, oppressive spirit. Think about this, you guys. 
Okay. So, um, I just wanted to bring that out. I really felt like that was important to just make these clarifications. So let's talk about a couple places that have this, these tingling, haunting experiences, as most say in South uh, Pennsylvania in general, but a couple of them are, I'm already looking on the list. They're strictly out of Southeastern PA. Something Hmm. strange is going on in Southeastern PA. (laughs) For the listeners, um, geographically, so we don't have to look this up. What are some of the more well-known cities in Southeastern? Oh, we have Philadelphia, we have New York okay. City, right? We have Camden, we have uh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C. I mean, Atlantic City, right? Like the New wow. Jersey, New York, like there's significant notability in his, historical cities as well as relevantly tr- yeah. I mean, people are traveling here. There's tourism there. I mean, you name it. We, we have everything Philly within to like New York 200 is, miles. Is, oh. is what, an hour or two? It's a, well, if you're from or is it pretty in close? downtown Philly, you can jump on a train in Trenton and be in New York City in like 50 minutes. Oh, if wow. you drive, I mean, it's... I had no idea it was that close. Dude, I'm living... Right now, I'm currently living, I don't know, 10 minutes from downtown Reading, Pennsylvania, and I can drive to New York City in less than two hours. And I'm oh, wow. 45 minutes from downtown Philly. So if you jump on a train or if you park your car in Trenton and jump on a train, okay. you'll come right out into the middle of New York City. Very so close. In Very my neck close. of the woods, this would be akin to perhaps living in Milwaukee and shooting down to Chicago. That's that's pretty close. So that's, yeah, that, sounds, yeah. that sounds very similar. So Okay. Haunted places in PA. Let's just go through a couple here on the list. Okay, so we have the Endless Mountains of Northeastern PA. Hmm, interesting. Jeez, <laughs> hmm. that's crazy. Okay, Erie, PA. Oh, yeah. Notably haunted and strange. Lehigh Valley, the historical hotel in Bethlehem. Some people out there just jumped and said, Oh, yeah, I know about room 932. Right? We have Lawrence, Haunted Hill View Manor in PA. Okay, we have Bradford, PA, from Towanda Township. It looks like there's a Keystone Theater there. Where the, I mean, this it's just nonstop. Pocono Mountains. Come on, I take my vacation in P, in Pocono Mountains. The old jail museum that's in Jim Thorpe, PA. Hmm. Um, Philadelphia, PA, is the Eastern State Penitentiary. Come on, you guys, right? And Philly's got like three million people, probably. Uh, Two million on record <laughs> in the city limits, the greater Philadelphia area. We got over 10 million people. Valley Forge. What happened in Valley Forge, you guys? Come on. I know people that travel from like California to take vacations in Valley Forge. Gosh, right? I never even thought of that because that's a uh, revolutionary war, right? Not exactly. civil. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. We have a l- ongoing list of wars and notable things. And I'm not going to give all the gems, you guys. Most of you who are like admin listeners who will like listen to every word that comes out of my mouth know I've been talking for almost a year now about research I've done on locations not too far from where I currently am that are American Indian related. Hmm. Uh, Not quite megalithic, but clearly important and way under the radar and the interest levels that certain organizations have that would blow your mind. If you found out what they're trying to do with this information would make you want to bring your cameras and your funding here so we can make this documentary happening. And that's in between the lines for the person who has the money and the team to hit me up and come here so we can make this thing a reality. The list just keeps going on and on. I'm not going to ramble, but honestly, there's way, there's so much going on in Pennsylvania we got, we've just talked about the history. We talked about the spiritual end of things. We talked about light versus darkness. We're hitting some of these climaxes. Pete, wh- what's going on in your mind right now? You jump back. Uh, well, yeah, I, some of the, some of the ones you mentioned, um, I, I found here on a, on a website, uh, visit PA.com haunted places in Pennsylvania. A lot of them you mentioned, uh, I'll give a couple more Farnsworth house Inn in Gettysburg. Uh, Penn's Cave and Wildlife Park, Center Hall. Um, but while you were talking, I also looked up, because I want to know, what is the definition of a keystone? Because you mentioned a keystone state. Um, and I, I almost, my jaw dropped reading this. Okay, I want to preface this, guys. So 
you listeners, you guys may be familiar with the unfinished pyramid, the all-seeing eye, the trapezoid as an occult symbol, right? This is Lucifer is the, is that eye, and it's the and it's completing that pyramid. Okay, with that thought, that picture in your mind, listen to this. The definition of a keystone is a wedge-shaped stone at the apex of a masonry arch, typically a round-shaped one at the apex of a vault. It is the final piece placed during construction and locks all the stones into position. Is that similar to that top of the pyramid? (laughs) I don't know. I like. (laughs) Keep going, Pete. (laughs) This is good. This is good. Well, you know, I don't want to try to overstate it and say, ooh, this is the most spooky state in the in the United States, but let's be real, there are a lot of things. It's it's top seven uh, it's number seven out of fifty states, according to a study. Um and we talk about some of these defilements in different wars and, and other things. Um it makes me wonder about, you know, Chicago with the amount of Crime. I mean, it's more dangerous to be in in many places there than it is in Iraq or, or Iraq or Afghanistan during the height of those wars. Interesting. Why is that? You know, yeah. there's deep there's deep underground military bases for one thing. You Ooh. listen to Jesse's Ooh. testimony and the defilements going on there. Oh, and these places are connected underground to different cities, like near where I live. From Chicago, it spreads out. You know, you look at the crime back then. I was just watching a movie I probably shouldn't have watched. It was Johnny Depp in, uh, playing John Dillinger. There's a lot of defilement in Chicago. So it just makes me wonder. You know, Tim Bentz has said um, that in the gatekeeping principle that he talks about. So go, guys, go listen to his classic interview with Rob Skeeler talking about the Federal Reserve and and Jekyll Island. But towards the second half of that, he talks about the gatekeeping principle where depending on, and I I think there's variable levels to this as believers, we have varying degrees of gatekeeping that, that God puts on us. I don't know how that works, but a gatekeeper is basically if you allow it in your heart and mind, even if you don't act on it, you're releasing that spirit into your location to some degree. It may be just in your home or it may be over your whole city. And he found in his region of Oklahoma where he lives, there was some unforgiveness and bitterness between local Christian leaders. And there was a like a one square mile area of Oklahoma in his city where like 90% of the murders would happen. And the police could not figure out why it was – it wasn't the worst part of town. They couldn't figure out why it was always happening in this area. And it wasn't until – guys, it was seven or eight pastors, leaders that had to forgive one another. And the crime rate dropped the following year. Wow. Wow. Okay. So we're getting a bit into – frequencies at this point and the the gates and the doors right we've mentioned i've mentioned this quite a number of times even when dan duvall was on me and dr laura were having some private conversations months ago where i reached out and asked her about the gates and the doors it was the scriptures i believe it was from proverbs well then dan duvall brings it up and now i just released an episode recently with carly a part two uh, i survived i'm an overcomer with carly t for you guys listening or uh with from the days of Noah that would like to check that out over here on the mustard seed. And she dives into that as well. And I'm saying to her, it's almost like I'll talk with people over the course of months or even a year. And I'll get these sentences from each person, right? I I don't remember every word everybody says, but there'll be highlights where I'm like, I'm, that's important. I'll put that on the back burner and they start to compile and create a paragraph And they're coming from diverse, different people and different conversations over time. And so just to hear gates and doors again, and how much we are gates and doors, you guys, if we are holding on to unforgiveness or bitterness and you have a haunting in your house, I would probably say you are a mini generating power source contributing to the haunting in your house. 
Yep. Don't ask me how I can prove it. That's just what my gut tells me. That's what my conversations with the Lord have led to these kind of insights. We have to be willing to lay it down to forgive, right? Judge not unto others the way that, uh, or don't be judging people. The measure that you use will be used. It, it's going to come back against you. In a yeah. nutshell, in layman's terms, if we're judging people and we have, we're holding on to this depressive, dark, maniac type mentality towards our peers, towards our family, towards the people who have hurt us, the people in our society, politics, whoever I'm talking to right now, whatever you're holding on to, you can be generating some of the dark supernatural things in your own life because you're giving legal access. There's legalities in the spirit world. And like you said in the beginning of this episode, Pete, the devil... He knows the playing field. He knows what the rules are and he plays according to the rules. So if you are an open ticket saying, Hey, I have despair. I have judgmental motives towards this group of people. If I'm holding on to bitterness, if I'm holding on to anger, rage, lust, whatever it may be, fill in the void with any of those things that you can think of. You are giving legal access. You're, you're a gate, you're a door. You've opened the floodgates and the door and you're allowing things to now work through you. And you are literally energy and vibration. You're wonderfully and fearfully created. If you're a human <laughs> in God's image and likeness, if for the humans, the non Nephilim or the non robots out there that may be trying to track this show, right? <laughs> so you got to have a little bit of humor, you guys, even though there's some truth in that, but we're made in God's likeness and in his image. So the enemy wants to pervert us right back to what we were talking about in the beginning, where literally to shut down our understanding of what our calling is, how much power we have, the authority that we have in our region, in our households, how many marriages are corrupt because men and women, we've been flip-flopped in the spirit world. We have these attacking and opposing spirits trying to decredit the position that God has created and everything's out of balance. And that's just scratching the surface. We could go on for hours talking about how, me, uh, how much is wrong. Not that we're going to do that here tonight with you guys, but the reason I'm talking in this manner I'm just trying to broadband and help some puzzle pieces come together for my brothers and sisters out there listening. There should be a couple things that I said, Pete said, where it's like, yes, that makes sense. Yes, that fits together. We're starting to see some clarity because we're living in a day and age where we can't have anything but sound word of God. We are storing the word in our heart that we may not sin against him. We are wise as serpents, but as harmless as doves. Think about the Nakash serpent in the English, but it's a Nakash. We're supposed to be as wise as the wisest of beast in the field, right? If you go back and read Genesis three, this, the Nakash, which is actually what it's called was the wisest of all the beasts that were in the field. Wow. That's a command. I don't think I can do that. I'm not insinuating. That's me. Guys. I'm just saying, let's talk about our, what we can see, what we can bring into focus and into maybe some understanding. And then we're relying on each other. This is a body thing. This is not the Rod show, the, the Pete show. This is the, Hey, we are here. You guys are journeying with us. We're covering this stuff. Maybe to spark one of you to make sense of what's going on. Maybe you're the one who can pray over your region and cut off one of these power lines that's feeding the darkness. Maybe you need to repent. I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but there's somebody out there. You need to repent, have a change of mind and stop feeding the region of darkness in your area. If we all decided to do that, we'd be shutting down the kingdom of darkness in region by region. And then we'd start to see the shift of now power and light coming back into the region. Cause we're doors and gates. We are. It's up to us. You guys, we got to stop waiting for these pastors to stand up and say it. We got to stop waiting for, Oh, I'm just, I'm going to, observe until the missionaries come by or they knock on my door or, oh, I'm not a podcaster, Rod. How can I do it? By simply you making that decision, I'm going to change my mind. Jesus, I want to go deeper with you. I've been feeling the tugging that resonates with somebody out there. You've been feeling that tugging. Let's go deeper into the Lord. Let go of the bondage, the iniquity. What's a real fast, Pete? He says, here's a real fast, letting go of the bondage of iniquity. Mm -hmm. letting go of the stuff. It's not just separating the food and the water from your vessel for a portion of time. And I'm not saying that's, that's important because the scripture also says some demons only come out by prayer and fasting. So yeah, 
That's in the ammo book, man. That that's on the that's the side piece. We carry this living word with us. It is living water, keeping us sharp and alert and ready in and out of season. But guess what, you guys? Individually, you're living in a region where there's dark and demonic things taking place. You're living in a spooky area. I've been talking with people recently who have been telling me, oh, yeah, I went into my brother's house and we seen a a shadow. Um, He just got saved. We're trying to pray it out. What do we do? You guys, this is legit. I'm on the horn with young believers, even old believers right now. And this is a common lingo. So make that choice. You can pray over your land. I recommend you also go through the I think it's. Daniel 10 or is it Daniel 11? He does a generational repentance as well, because there's things where the occult, where the Illuminati, where the Masons, they can attach through your bloodline decisions you didn't even make. You may need to generationally clean up some stuff, but all of this is real. I'm not crazy. I'm telling you what I know. And somebody else out there is going to get shaken and waken up to contribute to this body because We need you guys just like you need us because we are one body, one spirit, and one likeness, one mind, one baptism when we're in Christ Jesus. So, yeah. Wow. Sorry. I just kind of, well, no, I'm not sorry for that. Actually, that that's what I do. (laughs) That's that's great. No, just thinking, yeah, let's get aligned. We're, We're on the winning team if we're a believer in Christ. Like, I gave you a couple anecdotes the biggest, scariest, spookiest thing out there that anyone's seen or heard of are terrified of Jesus, right? Jesus loves me, this I know. Yeah, that Jesus, the Sunday school Jesus, right? The Jesus that they make fun of you because you're the good little prude. You're the, you're the Christian girl or boy, that Jesus, Oh boy, guys, if you're like a eight, 10, 12, 15 year old, and you're trying to figure out what you need to stake your life on, and you're looking at how your friends are treating you, and I don't want to go too deep in this Bible stuff or tell them too much about my church mission trip thing that I'm thinking about, they're going to make fun of me. Guys, the enemy is terrified of that stuff. That's just one of the tactics they use. Make your decision. The winning team is with the captain of the army, and that's Jesus. So get aligned with that captain. And to Rod's point, get some things out of our lives because, um, man, do an experiment if you wanted to. I'd, I'd almost even say put God to the test in this way. Stop whatever you think you're doing wrong. Like if you can make a list of five things, yeah, I shouldn't be looking at that. I shouldn't be saying that. I shouldn't be treating my wife that way. Make a list of five things. Consciously work on them and pray on it for like a week and see what your family atmosphere is like. You can change that atmosphere. You might you might notice it right there. I had a, I had a lady in our, our church meeting group say, when she missed meeting with us on Saturday afternoon one week, the rest of her week was chaotic and hard and emotional and all of this. And I said to her, I wonder if us just meeting weekly and edifying one another around God's word and praying for one another gives us a spiritual protection, a barrier that carries through the week. What if that's true, guys? Like, The spiritual world that Rod and I are talking about is more real than what, you know, the shirt I'm wearing, the headphones on my head. It's more real than that stuff. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to read, I'm going to read something here. Okay. Colossians three, I'm going to start at verse eight. That's just where I feel led. But now ye also put off all of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. 
Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. So you guys, you've made it this far in the episode. Yeah, this stuff that I just read to you, this living, breathing word, it is supernatural. And to some, it sounds very strange. And wherever you're from, there's probably strange things going on, not just in my region or in Pete's region. Although, hey, we threw the hook out there. People like strange, strange PA. What's going on, right? They they click and we got you. You're in great because he's he who is wise wins souls. So we got you. We covered some strange stuff. We gave you some fireworks, but we also gave you the truth. And don't be playing around in the days we're living in, you guys, because The battle is real. We're on a battlefield. Let's be wise. Let's know where the power comes from. Let's bear each other's burdens and so fulfill this law. And let's keep making cool podcast episodes because it's helping me and it's helping you guys. I mean, just by talking with other people, like I can't tell you how much that makes me feel alive again. Like I'm like, God, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Now it doesn't yes. pay the bills. I can't do it full time, but Lord, make a way, keep me doing this and let's see what happens. Yeah. Thank you guys for, for listening out there. You, it, it matters. You know, Rob, Rod often says to me, I'm not a numbers guy. I just, I want to stick to a message that God is pleased with. And I, I resonate with that, but it is encouraging when we see you know, the listeners growing because we feel like these topics are important and hopefully it is edifying to you and it gets you talking to your family about some of these stranger things that you can connect to the Bible, right? Because, hey, the world is interesting. The world has Hollywood and flashy music and fun game shows and money. <laughs> you want to talk about what really connects to the world is all the crazy stuff that's in those movies, they come from the things we talk about on our shows. The days of Noah, all those false pantheon of gods and creatures. Where do you think Hollywood gets their ideas from? Exactly. Okay. And and I forgot to mention this, Rod, earlier. But when you were talking about the lightning rod and I was mentioning Ghostbusters 2, you know, Tom Althaus, who we've had on the show a couple times on our show, Days of Noah, he wrote the matrix. He, it was called the immortals. It was stolen from him. Okay. By Warner brothers, etc. Um, and he said that they often will get their ideas. Maybe Jesse said this too. get their ideas for these shows and these movies from real life, from seances, from deep underground military base activities, from, weird things that they do in dark places that they shouldn't be doing, they get ideas for shows. So it would not surprise me if a lot of these elements that we see, you know, in Hollywood come from real life. The Bible's the most supernatural book. You can't beat it. And it's a shame that our pastors are not being trained in this, that our seminaries which may be infiltrated. I've heard rumors of that. I would like to dig in more on that topic. They're not being taught the whole counsel of, of scripture. Anyway, we could go off for a, for a a while, but hopefully you guys get some good nuggets out of that. And I'll let Rod kind of wrap it up here. Yeah. And now you guys kind of have an idea what we're going to do. Um, a part two, a part three, however much it takes, but the, you guys already know from listening to the show, we want to first and foremost educate each other with these topics, be aware of what's going on around us, look into things through a biblical filter. And we want to also stir up the interest for you guys to dig into what is going on in your local regions, stir up the prayer warriors. We want to reach another person that's just like us. You're not alone. You, whoever's listening to this out there, you're not alone. Come join. Come take a ride with me over here on the Millennium Mustard Seed. Come check out Pete and Luke on the Days of Noah podcast. You guys, when you give us the five-star rating and review, that helps the algorithms. We're not begging. We're saying, listen, put some value back into the show. 
donate. If you're built like that, if you got some money, donate, help us cover these gaps and put some value back into the podcast by leaving us that five-star rating and review because it helps. It makes a difference. And we appreciate you guys for listening this far. Share the show. I don't care how you share it. If you talk about it word of mouth, I don't care if you guys say, hey, let me send you a link for all the Apple people out there. Send it on Apple. Write us that written review. And we're praying for our audience as we covet your guys' prayers. We know we're getting emails. We're starting to get connected with more and more people. Just this morning, I was reading an email from a guy from Australia. I will get back to you, bro. I forget what your name is. But um, just from all around the world, we, we are becoming aware of each other, encouraging each other. We're growing together, and we are in service to the one name that is above all names. And with all that being said, Pete, take a final word. And we're closing out here. Thanks, Rod. Yeah, this was great. Um, I, I love how it turned into <laughs> a biblical edifying um, exhortation, um, hopefully, to you guys and, and to each other, I think. Uh, that's what it's about, it's connecting these things. There's, there's things that are weird and fun to look into. I mean, Blurry Creatures got me hooked with Nate and Luke. That's why I'm I'm doing this. I was inspired. I felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me one week when I was binging episodes. At, I happened to be able to binge like all week at, at work. I must have listened to 20 episodes or something in a, in a four or five, five day period. And I just I was like, wow, I want to talk about this with people. It wasn't even a show idea. I just want to get one or two other people and my brother Luke together to talk about like Genesis 6 let's start there you know um, but here we are so I'm thankful for Rod thankful for everybody listening yeah share it guys pass it along to family and friends click that 5 star it makes a difference um, and get in touch with us if we can pray for you send us an email Rod has contact info you can get in touch uh, mine is the days of Noah podcast at gmail.com send us a message so yeah, I guess with that, we'll wrap up, huh, Rod? Yes, that is it. That's the show, you guys. You know the deal. Keep us in prayer. Share the episode. Coming to you from strange southeastern PA. This is Rod from the Millennial Mustard Seed. And Pete from the Days of Noah podcast. God bless and goodbye.